Hi everyone! When learning UI design or Figma in general, it really helped me to try and replicate UI elements and various designs that I encountered within products that I used on a daily basis. And today we're going to do exactly that. So here we have an example of a UI element that is simple yet interesting enough to be worth replicating in Figma, in my opinion. And therefore, let's try and explore how we can create an interaction like this in Figma. And as usual, if you'd like to download the source file for this component, save time and support the channel, make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can download exactly this interactive component. And if you're here to learn how to create this, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to have to analyze in some way what is going on here, right? So you can clearly see that we have three states of this component of this UI element. We have an active state, we have a hover state and an inactive or a default state. So we know right away that the best way to go about this would be creating a button component. Let me just write this down. So button component uh, with uh, three states, right? We're gonna have to define what these individual states look like, which uh, this will serve us as a guide. And then also we're gonna have to create another component where we where we compile all of these together, we edit the copy of the button and um, we prepare it for, you know, we create a prototyping logic where we can click through individual uh, states. So why don't we start with this first phase? Um, I'm gonna use the text tool by pressing T on my keyboard and then I'm just gonna type in all. Let's match this as close as we can. I have a suspicion that the font we're dealing with here is called Rubato, possibly. Um, but if we don't find an exact font, um, it doesn't really matter. We just have to find something that is close enough. Um, but it seems like the Rubato font is what we are looking for because when I type videos over this videos button, I think it matches it pretty, pretty closely. I think, yeah, I think we can, I think we can comfortably use Rubato. Right, so that is settled. We have a font and we have a font size 13, and then we also are gonna create a space around this, right? So you can see it has some kind of padding um, because if it were just a text, this button would be really difficult to click. So I'm just gonna select this text, I'm gonna show you how to achieve this. Select this text and press Shift A to add an auto layout. I will Rename this auto layout by pressing Command R and I'm gonna type in button. And also, let me just create a fill. And I think this fill over here, what we're dealing with is, I think we're looking for this color, this blue color, right? However, with some kind of transparency, which means I'm gonna go over here to the fill section and reduce the transparency to a value that feels like um, feels like um, the correct value, right? So I think we're looking at 14, 15% opacity, something like that. I think this matches the inside of this button pretty closely. And then also it has a stroke, obviously. I think we're dealing with something similar. So again, we're looking at this blue color with some kind of transparency. Um, maybe it's gonna be 14 pixels as well. Let's try that. 14%, sorry, not pixels. Um, yeah, I think it's a bit less, so why don't we go for like 10? Yeah, yeah, color-wise, I think we have matched this pretty, pretty closely. And um, then, of course, the text will be blue. We'll just use this blue color, right? So I'm gonna sample that from here, right? Um, you can see that the color, you know, matches the real thing, but there is a you know, a difference when it comes to proportions. Uh, you can see that clearly uh, this, uh, this button is wider. So let me just add horizontal paddings over here. I think we're looking at 16, yeah. And then it's, all, it's not as tall, right? So we're gonna reduce this to nine. Could that be? Yeah, I think, yeah. So when it comes to width and height, I think we're, we're there. And finally, you can see that it doesn't have sharp corners. So how can we adjust that? We go to 
the frame section over here and we keep adding uh, the roundness value until it's completely rounded. And yeah, when we overlap these two buttons, I think you can see we, we have matched this pretty closely. Maybe let's reduce the height a bit. I think, yeah, if we reduce the height to eight pixels, I think that matches it closely. It's not exact, however, I think this is close enough. And also we wanna change the font to medium, uh, to regular, sorry, from medium to regular. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I think we have managed to mimic this pretty closely. Now we just need to create other states, right? So this is not the only state there is, we also have hover and we also have default but this will get very simple because um, it's all just about changing colors so let me just let me actually change the text of this i'm gonna type in default as in default state of oh so, sorry i'm gonna type in active as an active state of the button right so active this is an active state and just create rectangle that will be over here with the same background color as this and I can place my button over here right so we can work with this right and uh, with this button selected I'm gonna create a component by clicking over here so component and then we need two more variants so add variant and then again add variant so you can see we have a button component with three variants with three states for this one i think i'm gonna actually change this one to default we're gonna change obviously the appearance and then i also have default this is gonna be hover and the last one is gonna we're gonna keep that at active and default so when you take a look at this default state of a button you can see it has a black outline so let me just sample the stroke color from from here Right, seems like, like that. Then it has also no fill, right? You can see it has no fill. It's just a background color. And when it comes to the text, I think we're looking at white, right? So hover, um, again, when it comes to text color in the hover state, I think it's the same, right? Um, there is no fill, however, right? We're gonna turn off the fill. And the stroke is really prominent which means there is no, there's full opacity on the, on the stroke, right? So now take a look and compare. I think, yeah, I think this is identical, right? We have matched the design of the original, of the original product. I will create, I will rename this property under the button component to state, right? So I selected this component and then went over here to change the name right here. State, default, hover, and state active. What we want to do is link link all these labels, all this text content to a specific component property. So I'm going to press command and then click on the first text and then I'm going to press command shift and select the remaining two text objects. Then I'm going to go over here to content and click on create text property and I'm going to name this button text and the default text, the default value is going to be button. You can see we've changed, we've changed text of this button to button. The reason we're doing this is when we use an instance of this button, we will then be able to easily change the text over here, change text, right? So that's the reason we have just done this. Now, there's gonna be some kind of interaction. So when you hover over a button, you wanna make it change states like this. So let's select the first state, go to prototype and connect the first state to the second state. And we're gonna say, while hovering, change to state hover, mouse animate, ease out, and this is gonna be quick, 70 milliseconds. So when we now use this button, on our frames, on our prototype. When we hover over this button, it's gonna change from this state to this state. Now let's actually start assembling the final product, the final logic. So I'm gonna go over to assets and search for button. And then I'm gonna drag and drop that over here. I'm gonna also duplicate this rectangle so that we create a background for this. And um, let me copy this three times so that we get four in total. The distance between these two seems to be eight pixels, right? 
So let's select all of these, press Shift A and then define eight under spacing. I'm gonna rename this button switcher and this is gonna be our switcher component. So if you remember me saying that we're gonna have two components, this is the first one, this is gonna be the second one. Now let me select the first button and change the text to all to match this, uh, you know, th this product right here. And the second button is gonna be called videos, third button is gonna be called shorts, and the fourth one is gonna be called posts. You can see that it changed the text accordingly, right? So that's our goal. And here's what we need to do next. When by default you load this component, you load this UI element, that's gonna be all enabled, right? So we're gonna change all to active. So you're gonna see all types of content in your interface. And I'm gonna select this button switcher all the way out and create a component for this. We're going to need three more variables. So let me just create another one, another one, and a final one. When you switch to videos, well, you're gonna get the videos button enabled, right? When you switch over to shorts, you're gonna get the shorts button enabled. And when you switch over to posts, you're gonna have the posts button enabled, right? You're gonna have these four options. And why are we not defining hover states? Well, because Remember, in this button component, we've already defined this hover state. So we're don't, we don't have to do this anymore. What we're saying right here is basically saying, we're basically telling Figma to, whenever there is a button in a default state and a mouse hovers over this state, it's gonna change to the hover state. So whenever we hover over this button, this button, or this button, it's gonna change to hover, but not this one. Right, because we didn't define a hover state originating from the final active state. So that's the reason why only the default state is gonna react to your hovering. Makes sense, right? So why don't we start actually defining the interactions between these states? When you click on video, videos, you're gonna go over to videos. Let's actually make this on tab and instant. So on tab, change to property one, variant two. We're gonna also have to change the naming. So let me first select this component and again type in type of type of content, type of content, and whoops. And the first type of content is gonna be all, obviously. The second one is gonna be videos. We have to keep the naming consistent so that we can navigate through this easily. Shorts and posts. And whenever we click on videos, it's gonna Let's check interaction details, change to type of content, videos, right? Whenever we click shorts, it's gonna take us to shorts. On tab, change to shorts, instant, right? Seems logical. Posts, it's gonna take us to posts, and that's it for the first variant, right? From the first variant, you can go either here, here, or here. We've defined all that. From the second state, you can return back to the first state, right? On tab, change to all instant. You can also go to shorts and you can go to posts, right? You can see kind of where we are going with this. In the shorts state, you can return to all videos and you can also go to posts. And finally, from the posts one, you can go to all videos and shorts. So you can see we've created this kind of network of relationships that should make sure that when we use this component in our prototype, it's gonna behave similar to, or actually identical to this UI element. And the moment of truth, we're gonna actually test that. So let me create a frame by pressing F and I'm gonna create a frame that is 600, 600 by 350. We're gonna sample the color from here. We're gonna name this test frame and we're gonna go to assets and search for button switcher. Then I'm gonna click and drag and drop that right here and obviously center it so that it looks good. Looks exactly like the final thing, right? Like the original design, right? Let's select this test frame and launch the prototype. And this is what we get. Unsurprisingly, let me just make this larger. So fit with, or actually fill screen, right? And here we go. When I hover over videos, shorts, and posts, 
we can see that we get the hover state. That's because we've defined that relationship right here, right? When I click videos, I go to videos. And again, as you can see, the hover state will be enabled for the remaining three shorts, similar thing, posts, the same thing. And I can go from each state to whichever state I need. And this is it. This is the final result. This is how you create a button switcher used in YouTube Studio in Figma in just a few minutes. If you'd like to download the source file for this and use it in your own project, make sure to check the link in the description. Thank you for watching all the way to the very end. Leave a like if this video helped you and I will see you in the next one.